All right, welcome everyone to our webinar today of constructing a process to eliminate revenue leakage. Um, I'm joined today with Dave Falconer, who's the general manager for Next Minute, and then myself, Emily Mason. Um, I'll do a quick introduction of ourselves. So um, Emily, I am the partner manager for Next Minute. I work with the accountants and bookkeepers, um, and I'll kind of go into that process a little bit more at the end. Um, but my background, I worked in an accounting and bookkeeping firm for four years, and then I moved across to um, the SAS side and have worked in kind of the uh, ecosystem for the last five years. Um, and that is where I kind of came across Next Minute. Um, and it's a really cool product that really just enticed me to come and join the team. Uh, so Dave, I'll let you introduce yourself. Yeah, um, yeah, thank you, Emily. And yeah, we're very happy to have Emily on board. She's a great asset. And look, I've been in the SAS business for over 20 years and I've been involved with Next Minute for a little over five years. So right in the early days of the founding piece. Um, I think today's topic is a really interesting one. Um, you know, our business is focused in on builders and the trades and fundamentally around helping them build better businesses. And at the moment, as you're well aware, there's a lot of work, there's a building boom and trade boom going on and it's across both uh, New Zealand and Australia. And so that presents a lot of opportunities for our target market. Um, but also it presents a few risks as well. I guess what we're going to talk through is how can we help out our builders and trades to take advantage of some of these opportunities and don't fall onto some of those risks. So really looking forward to stepping through some of the topics today. Cool. So I will just give a quick intro into what is Next Minute or who we are. So we are a job management software. Um, and we have been designed to take uh, all your job and task management quotes, invoicing, kind of everything and wrap it into one really neat software. Um, it's pretty much everything that the tradies need day to day to get their work done. Um, and probably the biggest thing that interested me in Next Minute was the really great integration that we have with Zero and NYOB. And that's where my role kind of fills in with the accounts and bookkeepers. Um, because we do have a bit of a crossover into obviously what the tradies need to do day to day, but then what you guys need to do day to day as well and making sure that there's a really neat process. So things like allowing to import supplier invoices um, and export customer invoices and then also the timesheets. So as you can see on the screen, we are a job management system. Um, it's for all trades. Uh, we are a digital tool belt, essentially. That's how we like to look at ourselves. Um, everything in the kind of trade industry has been upgraded with software. So why not include that into your mobile phone as well? Um, and then as you see, we've got the quality data that we offer from the, the integrations that we have. So I'll hand over to Dave now just to talk about the next minute story and kind of how we came about. Um, yeah, so it's quite an interesting one. Um, and it's really relevant to where we are right now. So Next Minute was founded in around 2015. And basically where this came from is our, uh, our founder was doing a large renovation at home. Uh, he had you know, builders and plumbers and electricians on site. And he was constantly, I guess, blown away by the paper-based approach that they ran. And so whenever he would ask to get an invoice so that he could physically pay an invoice, they were late, they were inaccurate. And he thought, well, there's got to be a better way. He goes, in his own head, in his words, he goes, this is something that you should guys should be able to do in the next minute. Hence, next minute was spawned. Um, and so, look, Simon worked away and he, I guess, built the, the bones of, of the product along with a bunch of other really talented developers. And what we've done is we've, we did an early partnership with a large trade supplier in New Zealand placemakers and so really our pedigree has come out of working alongside builders and trades to actually help them uh, help themselves so that they can run better businesses. Along the way, we've also connected in with the bookkeeper community and accounting um, partner community, where they also see that taking these businesses and, and connecting them into the apps such as Zero or MYB is a really smart way to, I guess, leverage some of those early investments and steps that have been made to help builders basically go along that adoption path of technology. So the business is growing rapidly. Um, New Zealand and, and Australia are, are really sort of our mainstays and that's been, you know, founded by um, all the hard work that's happened alongside our builders, but also with the cool work that's happened with our partners and bookkeepers who, um, you know, we love listening to because they help 
foster and grow our customer base, but also almost more importantly, they provide us with, our, I guess, all those connected ideas of how we can work better alongside their workflows so that we can build a product that's actually going to meet the customer needs as well as the needs of the partners that are helping them. So um, a lot of work going on to get to this point, um, but very exciting. And, and the UK is uh, expanding underway. So um, a rapid growth and really excited with where we are. Emily, why don't you tell us around what scope creepers is one of the topics uh, that you've been well rehearsed in? <laughs> Absolutely. Um, and I know this is probably a bit of a tired subject for the accountants and bookkeepers on the line. I know for the last um, nine years that I've been in the space and the multiple zero cons that I've been to, it is a very heavily talked about topic um, of that and along with fixed pricing. So I know that there's probably a few people on the line probably rolling their eyes a little bit. <laughs> Um, but obviously today we're not talking about how it affects the accountants and bookkeepers. It is more about how it affects the trades and construction businesses. Um, my favorite kind of saying is it's the kitchen sink syndrome. You know, you're everything but the kitchen sink is getting thrown into a project. Um, for anyone who doesn't kind of know what scope creep is, it's essentially when a project outgrows um, or kind of goes far and above and beyond the original scope of work that was discussed. And it does affect all industries, uh, industries that provide services. So that is kind of the summary of it all. And I know it is very, really tired and spoken about and it's really worn out, but um, I think for the trades industry, it's probably not something that's discussed a lot. And for the accounts and bookkeepers, you guys probably see with your trade clients all the time that they've got money leaking from their businesses everywhere, but you can't work out where it's coming from. And so how are you guys meant to do your work if you don't know where that's kind of happening? So I'll hand over to Dave now yeah. to just break down how it well, affects the trade. Yeah, I find that really interesting that it's been you know, so hammered into, I guess, that bookkeeper accounting community, you know, trying to frame up and get these fixed price services out the door and just how important it is that you contain your scope of work or at least expand it and get a new contract in place for additional services you need. Because as you know, that if you do more and don't get paid anymore, well, that doesn't benefit anyone. And I guess that was really the genesis of this whole topic is, Within the trade and building industry, what we see is this is a very, very prevalent part of everyday life. So, you know, a piece of work is scoped up. It can be small or a really large, you know, new build, you know, like a multi-million dollar new build fixed price. Now that's fine, but what happens is once that quote goes out, which is ultimately the, what's the scope, but it's more around what are the dollars involved with it, it's really important that that gets contained. Um, then the work starts. Literally from that point is where the scope creep can start. Um, and it literally starts right off the get go. So what this is all about is, so for these trades people is it's, they know that there's unexpected stuff happening all the time, right? That's their life. They, they solve problems, they're really good at it. But what we've found is solving problems, being really good at solving problems is great, but you should and deserve to get paid for it. And I guess that was kind of where we want to get to that. Because if you're doing a fixed price job and you're not getting paid for those extra pieces, um, that's not much fun. And so ultimately, how do these variations happen? And look, they can come in many shapes and form. I mean, this could be something where the design gets changed, you know, the roof line wants to get changed because of the sunlight and you've already, you know, started the job. Um, it may well be that someone wants to extend something and use more of a certain material um, because of the way they want to sort of extend something. Um, the real classic one is just a straight variation on the scope of work. And that could be something like, oh, can I have a new fence? I never planned for it, we never talked about it, but I want a new fence next to this piece here. Um, but what's really interesting around this variation from the original scope, and we'll touch on it later, is that they don't have to be big variation. It's, you know, lots of little variations add up to a lot. And I guess that's what we want to talk about as part of this is it's not just about trying to trap a $50,000 variation. It's all those little things that add up that actually um, add up to a lot. Um, there's a really interesting one, variations to the proposed and actual conditions. Now this might be something along the lines of more around the timeline. So, if the client has said, oh, I've talked to the next door neighbor and they said, we can work Saturday mornings and then you start and then that 
gets reneged on, that's going to be a change of scope. That's a, that's a variation of what you agreed. So that could shift our timelines and all of those other things. So that needs to be accounted for. And then variations to quality is, is another one. So up speaking is another way to term that where someone goes, well, I'd like triple glazing now on my joinery now, not just double glazing and all oh, those, that bench top I don't want for mica anymore. I want a beautiful granite top. Now, all of those variations to quality add up. So even if you've allowed for X, if it's a different quality, it's really important. And I guess one, one final piece to this, and I was thinking about it um, earlier on today, is sometimes you get variations that remove scope, um, but they don't happen that often, but you can still use it to actually acknowledge that something has been removed as well that you're not going to do something. And having that accepted as part of your process is a really, really important one as well. So, I mean, so what was the problem with any of those things though? I mean, how, what are the outcomes of that? You know? um, I guess for me, the way I looked at it is it's death by a thousand cuts because there's so many um, flow and effects from all of it. So I have a really funny story, actually, I was thinking about it earlier as well. I had my blinds fixed. I've just moved into a new rental property. And we, when we moved in, the blinds were broken. And I didn't know why. I, did, I couldn't fix them myself. So we had a handyman come out. And he was like, oh, yeah, easy. I can do this today. It will take me 15 minutes. So he And I'm on the third floor of an apartment block as well, I should probably mention, with no elevator. So he runs down to his ute, gets his ladder, brings it all the way back up, gets up to look at the, the curtains that he's trying to fix and the hooks are missing. Like the actual hooks that hook the curtain onto the, the rod were gone. And he's like, I don't know where they've gone. So for him, he thought it was just this straightforward job where he was gonna come and hang these hooks back up. But now he has to go leave my place, leave all his equipment here. So that's a risk for him to leave all his stuff in an unknown place. Or he has to pack it all up, take it back down to the third floor, go to the hardware store, buy the materials he needs, come back, fix it. So what he thought was gonna be 15 minutes is now a full day job with all these materials and costs that he wasn't thinking about. So I think um, that's like just a really simple example of where a variation can happen. And he's probably not gonna charge anyone for it because he didn't scope the work to start with. Yeah, yeah. So it's death by a thousand cuts for him because now he's probably gonna push out another job that's not gonna happen. He's probably feeling a bit stressed and there's more costs that he has to pay out of pocket. So I think overall, you know, there's kind of five areas that broke down to. So you're going to get stressed stuff because either their timelines or their deadlines are changing constantly and they thought that they were working on this job and it was going to finish at five o'clock tonight, but now it's been extended by another week and they've got to do more work in either the same or less amount of time. The quality of work will suffer as well because they weren't expecting for all these additional things to be happening. So the people who are actually doing the work are probably seeing they're going, well, shit, we've got, you know, all this work that needs to be done in the same time frame. So we're going to start rushing and cutting corners. Um, the deadlines aren't met, which is going to lead to point five of the unhappy customer. And then either profits might be lost um, or in some instances, people are charging for them, but then the customer's getting an invoice that could be thousands of dollars more than what they were expecting. And then same thing, it leads back to point five that you've got unhappy clients. So there's a pretty simple solution that um, we've come up with at Next Minutes. Uh, not very groundbreaking, but quoting is essentially where we think could be the best uh, solution. So every time a uh, new variation is identified or a change to the scope of work is identified, um, really simply just create a new quote for it. As I said, it's not groundbreaking um, and it doesn't take a huge amount of time for some tradies out there who don't have a system in place, this might seem a little bit daunting to them, especially if they're going, well, I've got to go and get, you know, my laptop and I've got to do it on my Word document, I've got to manually type it all up, then it's going to be a little bit time consuming for them and it, it might not happen the same day, it might take until Friday is the next time they're, they're at the computer, then sure it's a problem, but with a solution like Next Minute, they've got it on their app on their phone. And they can just create that um, quote or variation really simply with us. Uh, they are called quotes, but you can just change the name to variation one, variation two, and things like that. Um, the other common solution that we see and what we hear from a lot of tradespeople is that if it's less than $500 or if it less, takes less than one hour, they'll just wrap it into the initial quote, which is fine if it's only one change that needs to happen. But if you give a client an inch, they will take a mile. 
and what will end up happening is they'll request nine more changes. So you will end up with 10 changes that you think, oh, it's only 45 minutes, we'll just wrap it in. But if you've got 10, 10 changes at 45 minutes each, you're looking at nearly a whole working day, seven and a half hours of time spent on all these changes that you're not quoting for and you're not capturing anywhere. Um, and then if you look at that on the flip side of the money, if you're looking at, well, it could be, by, if it's under $500 and you're charging $450 for these 10 changes, then again, you're looking at nearly four and a half grand worth of work that's just walked out the door that you're not capturing anywhere. And that goes back to, you know, how, what are the problems? Your staff is stressed because they're doing work that they're not getting paid for and it's in the same amount of time frame. And then the next problem is that you're not tracking it anywhere. You're not, there's yeah. nowhere for your staff to know that they've got these tasks allocated to them. It's not planned out. And then if you're adding more tasks in, what is that delaying? What's pushing out the next task or, you know, the deadline for that job? So then you need to plan for it as well. And then once you start planning, it kind of starts to unravel a whole bunch of other things. So I think now would be a really good time to jump into the products um, and show you guys kind of how those quotes, variations, the planning stuff work. Perfect. Thank you for that, Emily. Um, yeah, it's, it's a really interesting one that, you know, you know, you, you, and if we think about a, a building job is you, you've got this big job on the go, it's worth a lot of money. And what happens is the small things just get swept under the carpet because it's only a little bit here, a little bit there, but over time they build up. And I just think there's, you know, a lot of money left out on the table as we talked about revenue leakage. It's like, you deserve that. You've worked hard for it. You've done the job. Um, you've probably set the expectation with the customer, but it just hasn't been finished off. Um, and I guess that's really what I want to talk to today. So I've just logged into Next Minute here. Um, so that's just an admin uh, user so I can see everything and do everything. I'm just going to go and open up this job. So this is a job that's already been quoted and it's underway. Um, so everybody's working away, beavering away, getting everything done, which is fantastic. So in here, I can always go in and have a look at the quotes that I've done. So my, I guess my header quote. But as Emily was talking about before is, over time, when things turn up, you need a place to capture these to add to your, I guess, your foundation quote or your header quote. So over time, you can come in here and simply add in variations as they turn up. Now, they can be tiny things. And they can be really, really large things. But the whole point of this is that you have tracked it. You've associated dollars to it, not just dollars that you, the client has, but also your costs. And then you've actually formally gone and issued or sought um, acceptance of that particular uh, variation in the form of a quote. Now, why that's important is what happens over time is if you have discussions with people, um, people's memories fade really easily. And I was looking at this example here. So in this example here, I've got a variation, which is a pull fence, and I've got a variation and someone wanted some polished floors. Now, imagine the conversation I had you know, the client comes to me, oh, I'd like a new pool fence. I'm like, oh, yeah, that's probably, I don't know, five to seven grand, no worries. And he's like, oh, yeah, sweet, go for it. That client in their head is probably thinking five grand or four grand because they're forgetful. They're not going to be thinking the top size. And then along comes another one, maybe two weeks later, oh, we want these small polished concrete floors now. We didn't want it like this. And this is a slightly bigger ticket item. And you're like, oh, that could be anywhere from, I don't know, 11 to 16 grand. Okay, so you, you're setting these high level expectations. So if you think about it in your head, you're going, okay, well, that's 7,000 and that's about 15 and a half thousand. The client's probably going, oh, that's about 5,000 and that's about 12,000, if they can even remember. So in their head, they're going, this whole job is still sitting under $200,000. But if they had just had that documented down in a really, really simple, succinct way, even if it's just a one-liner to say that this is what it's going to, um, what it is, what we're doing. And you can even uh, talk about the scope of the work in here, if you like. And then that was issued out to the client and it was accepted by them. That is a line in the sand that you know that that thing's done. And then you add the next one. So it's just a matter of coming through here and systematically doing that. And the fact of the matter is, is you can do that on your phone directly. So even if it's just capturing the basics of it whilst you're there on site, you can have that logged in here, come back to your office, tidy it up, issue it out to the client, they can accept or, or decline it. 
then you've got to log all the stuff. Because as you can see, these things add up really, really quickly. So when you're adding one of these variations, you can be really smart about it too. So when you go add, you can go in here and you could um, add one using one that you've already done before. So I could go and pick up that one if they wanted some polished floors on their outside house as well. Or I could come in here and just do a really quick add, which is, let's say it was like for $500, I could do a really, really quick and I guess cheap and dirty way to get a, a quote out just so that they acknowledge it. Or I could come in here and use a pre-built template. So for more elaborate big ones that I want to make sure that I always cover. Um, so I would say front gate, section three, however I want to name it. And then I can come in here and that's going to break out all the different elements, give me a really nice starting point. And I just simply come in here and adjust the prices, quantities, remove what I don't want, issue it out directly to the client. So you can build these things so fast and get them out to them that there really is no excuse. And I guess the best thing about this is then this is all extra money and revenue and profit for all the hard work that's going on. So that's sort of the key thing. And then if you choose that you don't want to issue it or it doesn't make any sense, you can just come in here and just simply remove it. So I guess the point I'm trying to make here is you can be really, really quick and fast to get the stuff noted down so that you can track and manage it. So that's the first piece, which is around going, I want to formally let that client know that this piece of work is a variation and this is how much it's for and what we're going to be doing. So that's the first piece. The second piece is around understanding, well, how big is that piece of work and, and how much detail do I want to track and manage against it? So a small variation, you might not worry about trying to get everyone's time sheets against it or anything like that. You might just want to make sure that the client's acknowledged it. So at the end of it, when you're washing it all up, you can show them all your variations. If it's a larger piece, um, so on the long lines of that polished floors, you can then come across here so in your job plan. So in this case here, I've just filtered it down by one job. Here's the job that we've been talking about. I've already got my pull fence variation here because that's quite a big piece of work and I wanted to understand where and when I was going to do that and who was going to be working on it. And the beauty is, is at any point, if I want to go and have a look at that particular task that relates to that job, I can just click on it and it's going to give me all the charges that have hit that particular task or variation. I'm going to have the quote that was already put against it. And then ultimately I can understand how well I'm performing on that particular variation. So it's a really nice and neat way to collect all that stuff together. But what I wanted to show you is how quick and easy it is to add a, uh, a new task in here, if you want to track it for a variation. So I'll go back to the job. Let's say it was for this one here, the polished floors. I can just come into here. I can then look and see where I want to do this particular piece of work. I can then go, well, I'm just going to add it down below and I can just name it. Polished floors. My typing is pretty good today. That's excellent. Variation two. Um, and second I click out of that, it's going to drop my task in. So I can now come in here and start to fit that in amongst all the other work that's going on. If I want to, I can then connect it up to another um, another task to create a dependency. So within, I guess, several clicks, I can quickly take that quote that's gone out to the customer. They've accepted it. I've now dropped it in here. So I've now got all my tasks all looking at this. My whole team knows what they're working on, what's going on. If things shift as they invariably do, I'm going to see the corresponding bump on effect to all my tasks. Um, so I've now got control. Uh, the best thing about having a good plan is when things change, you know what you're moving from. So I'm a really big fan of using that. Again, it's up to the discretion of, let's say, the builder. For small stuff, you might not ever do it, but it's really nice to know that you can drop the stuff in and get an understanding of how and when you're going to deliver this, I guess, variation. And just, I guess, the final piece that I want to touch on is I've got my job. I have all my different elements in here. If you've gone and created one of those tasks, you can then uh, force your team, so when they timesheet against that particular job, to come in and choose what piece of the puzzle they want to timesheet on. So there's that polished floors variation. So if I was working on that just today, I'd come in here and, 
and I was doing buffing. And hit save, done. Now that's gonna record that time for me as a user against that variation. So I can then go back and have a look at that from a back costing perspective. So that's kind of that whole, I guess, workflow that sits around it. It's really simple, it's really fast, it connects into your job, you can then plan it out. And really at the end of the day, it's knowing that you've got this audit trail. So at the end, you're not trying to wash up this big or mop up this big pool of dollars. You've set the expectations all along the way. And if the client didn't want to do it, they could have declined it, which is fine. But then you've got that record there. So it's a for me, it's kind of a no-brainer. There's a lot of money to be made in variations, um, but you've got to track them and get them approved along the way. So that's a bit of an overview on how that stuff fits in. And the beauty is, is if you're already using Next Minute for all those other aspects, it just fits in so perfectly along the side. All right. Time to it's probably there. worth mentioning there as well that um, with your quoting, you're probably doing this regularly for fixed price jobs where you know, you know, we're just going to charge 20 grand, we're going to charge, you know, half a million dollars for this job. Uh, but for time and material jobs as well, even if you're not quoting and the customers know that they're just going to get charged for however long the work takes, they still will probably want to be aware if something's going to be delayed or if the deadlines aren't going to be met because they've probably put you know, time aside, especially in house, re house renovations. They've probably gone, oh, well, I can't work from home for this six months because the house is being built or renovated. And then if something's going to delay it by two or three weeks and they're not aware of it, that needs to be communicated as well. Otherwise, it's going to leave a bad taste in their mouth. And a lot of tradies work on word of mouth referral. So you want people saying good things about you. So if you can communicate really well, that's going to help. Yeah, that's absolutely true. As you know, setting those client expectations and, you know, all they want to do is know what's going on. Um, you know, it's a lot of the time it's a lot of money and it's quite an emotional part of, um, you know, the project is dealing with the money and, and the scope of work. So the, the clearer you are with it and the more upfront you are, the smoother it's going to work out. Absolutely. Uh, so that probably leads in really well to uh, just kind of the job management aspect. So as you saw, Dave just showed the quoting and the, the planning side of things, but um, touched on things like the tasks and the timesheets. So Next Minute is kind of a one-stop shop or an online filing cabinet for, for everything. So rather than having you know, text messages and emails and WhatsApp messages going around the job site, you can have just one central place for all the staff to be communicating in against the job, they can see all the changes, they can get allocated to those tasks. They can put notes in against that task as well. So if something unexpected comes up and they couldn't finish the job, again, it can be communicated in the one system. Um, and then even you could print out some of those reports or the, the timeframes and send them to the client so that they can see it as well. Yeah. And that's a really good point. It's having that audit trail. Um, we've seen that happen where clients wish to see it and it's typical kind of timesheets now that where clients really, you know, they'll ask for it once, you know, can I see the guy's time checks? And you issue them out and they will never ask again because you know that you're using a system. So it's really important. Yeah. And then the timesheets are obviously perfect for those jobs that are time plus material, but then also for the fixed price jobs. So then you've got an estimated amount of time that you were looking to spend versus how long it's actually taking. And that's a really common problem with um, the scope creep or variations on job sites is, I know with bookkeepers and accountants, you guys are looking into their profit and loss and you can see, well, sure, they've been working on these jobs and they're going to make money from it. But then at the end, they've gone and spent more money than what they've made. How did, how did that add up? And all you can see is the timesheets and the time spent, but you can't really see anything else around it. Um, the timesheeting is really helpful as well because they can do it from their mobile. As you can see from the screenshots, it's mobile, it's um, for tablets and then Obviously, anyone who's an admin logging in from computers is probably going to be a little bit more regular for you guys. You can jump in and see everything that's going on. And then we also send the timesheets back to uh, Zero for payroll purposes. So we have a really good integration there where we can send, um, based on the pay period, send the timesheets for that week or that month back into the, the payroll um, provider, which, I mean, Zero is probably the most common one. So that's really helpful for you guys as the bookkeepers and the accountants. And then obviously, as I've probably mentioned a couple of times already, we do work on all devices. We've got um, apps for both iOS and Android, which is really helpful. Um, obviously just meaning that 
doesn't matter what phone your staff members use, everyone's going to be able to record their timesheets every day um, and start tracking these variations. Um, and then we also obviously work on the computer and tablets. So that's really helpful for just making sure everyone's got access all the time. We also have a really cool integration with supplier bills. Um, most tradies have a glove box full of their receipts. Um, and I'm sure many of you on the line have started recommending something like Dext or HubDoc to your clients in the past, whether they're using it 100% or not, you might still be getting those shoe boxes full. Um, but for those who are using a system that helps capture their invoices, we can allocate the supplier invoices in next minute um, by integrating with MYB and Xero. So the way that it works is that the tradies would take a photo, obviously, of their receipts on their phone using hopefully Dext or HubDoc, get them into Xero or MYOB, and then we'll pull them into next minute and they can be uh, allocated against the tasks or the, the job and then captured for you know, markup purposes. So anyone who's kind of working in the job sites probably have said in their quotes that there's going to be maybe a 10 or 15% markup on every material that they have to purchase. Uh, so we will feed them directly into next minute so then they can be allocated and captured into the final customer invoice. Another really um, interesting piece to that is what we're seeing also um, both in New Zealand and Australia um, is larger trade suppliers, whether that's Reese's or Bunnings or, um, you know, the Mitre 10's IHG's, they are starting to uh, connect them with Xero themselves. So if you've got a, if you're a, a, a tradie and you've got a, an account with, um, let's say Reese's and you want to pull down all your bills, you can, and it's going to connect straight into zero. And that is something that we're going to see more and more and more of that is uh, rapidly happening, um, happening. So I would expect that in the next 12 to 24 months that if you're a large trade supplier and you're not connecting with zero and pushing down your bills or to MIB for that matter, uh, you're going to get left behind. So I guess the point here is it's getting easier and easier for these bills to get into zero. And what we're suggesting as well, if that's the case, which is what's happening, we've made it easier and easier to seamlessly pull those bills straight across in the next minute and accrue as charges. So that understanding, particularly for those variations as well, if you want to attribute certain costs to them, you can do it down to that detail by pulling those bills from zero or MYB directly into your jobs inside next minute, which is a massive time saver. And also it just provides that accuracy of what is the real costs and profit on this particular job. Yeah, we've seen it here in Australia. MYB um, recently announced that they have integrated with Bunnings here in Australia. So they have a direct integration, which I assume does kind of a similar thing. Haven't seen it live, but I'm assuming it pulls uh, any of the, the trade accounts straight in so they can see all their purchases. So that's kind of a summary of how the integration works and the process. Um, so for the bookkeepers and accountants on the line, you will probably be familiar with the, the first two steps pretty, uh, pretty simply. We'll then send them directly across into next minute, saving the tradies from having to do the manual entry themselves. Um, they can just pull it straight across and allocate against the jobs. And it's really helpful because obviously for you guys, the bookkeepers and accountants, as I said before, if they're not allocating these costs against their jobs, you're not going to see where the money is being spent. So if you know that your clients are running at a loss, how are you meant to advise them on where they can improve if you can't actually see the full picture? So having a system like this and a process in place is going to help with you guys kind of getting to that end job that you need to be doing as well. Right. So the next part, I guess, is the oh, sorry, yeah, yeah. customer invoices is, for Dave. I was going to say, this is kind of um, really where the, where the crux of it steps in. Um, you know, ultimately, it's one thing to track all this stuff and get your quotes approved and all your variations, but you've got to have an effective way to get those invoices out quickly and accurately to your customer. Because the better you do that, or better the client, your clients do that, the more likely they're going to get paid quickly or ahead of the next person. Now, at the moment, you know, the market's pretty buoyant on this front, but that won't always be the case. So it's always best to be at the front of the queue uh, when it comes to invoicing. So what I want to do is talk about invoicing in regards to, you know, that scope group and variations, because we've got a couple of different methods that we can use. Um, 
you can create those different variations and send them off and get approved. Um, so if they're larger chunks, the client might want to pay for those chunks or those variations as a separate invoice from the main progress payments that they have on their fixed price job. So that's really simple inside next minute. You literally would grab the variation that you've sent off and literally go create invoice from variation. And then you can issue it out and it's going to be verbatim what you've sent to them, it's going to be have all the right information and then that's something you can get out the door really, really quickly. They're going to know that it matches up to the original variation you sent them and then you can get that paid, uh, sorry, sync through to zero once in MIV or MIV, sorry, and then pull through the payments once that's done. So that's a really smart way and quick way to get those variations, I guess, paid if they're larger pieces of work. There's also another way where you may, or the client may choose to go, well, I'll just wrap it all up into a month, one monthly invoice as an example. So that's really simple to do too. So you can just generate an invoice and you can pull in the different variations that you want to include in your overall payment claim. So let's say that under your contract, your progress payment for the month of July will be $50,000. So that's fine. So you can create that invoice and have that $50,000 sitting there for payment. You can then add in another section and simply add in those variations underneath it for the exact amounts that you've already issued to them. So once again, when they receive their invoice, it's going to be crystal clear what they're paying for and what components relate to what. I guess that's what we've seen a real um, massive benefit to people who are using this stuff because then they're not getting queried or going, well, this invoice is for 62,500. How is that split? What's that made up of? I can't remember. Does that include the pool fence or is that the polished floors? Do it once, do it accurately, do it quickly with the information that you've already created. So if you want to wrap up a single invoice for a month on that particular job for that customer, you can. It's going to look nice and professional. You're going to do it quickly and do it accurately. And then, of course, sync it across to zero MYB so that you've got your one single source of truth that you, know, you can make sure that everything's on track. So that's a, that's a massive advantage for these, these variations that are getting tracked that you've got those two different options to provide the detail to your customers. And then when that all, I guess, comes together, it all really comes down to, am I making any money on this particular job? And I know that's kind of a very simplistic way to overview this stuff because I know that, you know, these builders and these traders are really actually trying to do a good job and move on to the next one. But if they're not making a profit, that's going to harm the way that they can take on their next job and their next job, okay? So with this information, as we've talked about, you've got your job, you've built your quotes, got your bills coming in, got your invoices going out, got all the team time sheeting, you're going to have a one-stop shop to go and have a look at the health of that job from a financial perspective. Now, if you're not using a tool of some description, this can take hours and hours and hours of grooming through spreadsheets, pulling in stuff from zero, looking at timesheets that are handwritten. It's a real dog's breakfast. Whereas in the next minute, if you can have those basics in place, you literally click a button, run this report, and it's going to tell you what your estimated costs were based on your header quote, plus any variations that have been approved, what your actual costs are to date, what your revenue is, how much have you invoiced, what's left to be invoiced, and ultimately, what's your gross profit. Now, to be able to get that all in one sort of foul swoop is really important. Now, for smaller jobs, it's important, but it's not as important as some of these bigger ones where they're waiting on $50,000, $100,000 invoices to come in. You know, they've, they've, they've got all this unbuilt work that's turning up or they've got their fixed price, and it's so critical that they have their eye on this. Now, as I mentioned at the start, you know, materials are going up in price, I think by 30% on average, uh, building materials anyway in the last six months, and that's not gonna stop. So if there isn't good controls around this, we're gonna see a lot of people get burnt and lose money. And I just think back to the whole point of this, this um, webinar was around preventing that revenue leakage. So if this is one area that we could get people to have a bit of a think about, and look to get smarter with how they do it, they can save themselves a lot of hassles 
but more importantly, they can get paid for the things that they've done and they deserve to get paid for. And I think at the end of the day, that's really what it's all about. Absolutely. And I think no shade to Zero or MYOB, but from what I've heard in that kind of space around any bookkeepers and accountants who have been working with trade clients, it's so common, especially with Zero, they weren't built to be a job management system. And so sure, they've built features to help track projects and job, jobs, or especially around the, the projects and tracking features specifically. They have added those in, but they're not capturing the full cost accurately. Um, and then what ends up happening is the tracking categories and always inevitably ends up becoming a complete mess and they're not really finding out exactly what they need from it. So I had a client yesterday, for example, say to me, oh, well, we just added you know, 20 more profit and loss categories in so we can start tracking our costs more accurately. But I was like, well, you're still not going to because it, zero is never going to track your job management with your timesheets and you know all your other costs perfectly. So you know, they, they're great for what, you know, their accounting software, but they're never going to be a job management software. So for the accounts and bookkeepers on the line, you guys can't do your job either by reporting on profit and loss and balance sheets properly when you don't really know where costs are falling or where they're disappearing to. And it's interesting because it's actually just some of the simple things that we do that we make it really easy for, you know, the team. Because, I mean, yes, you've got the builder, right, who's, who's running the business, but if their team aren't providing um, that person with the information, i.e. the timesheets or updating, you know, any variations that turn up and taking photos along the way, that's just another avenue for mistakes, you know, expectation management, um, you know, getting lost with the client. It's so important to have the basics in place. And that's where we see, I would say, the bulk of the benefit is doing those simple things really, really well. Um, and, that, and that's what it you know, ultimately is built for. Yeah. So I guess who's next minute right for? Um, obviously, all trades that we've spoken about. Uh, builders, plumbers, electricians, painters, landscapers, all of them um, can have a place with us. Uh, ideally, anyone with below 50 staff members. Um, we try and cater to more, more of the smaller businesses. But most importantly, it's anyone who's looking to grow their business. Um, whether that's by elevating processes or profits. Um, obviously from the topic today, we're looking to plug uh, revenue leakage and help improve on the profits. But also um, just anyone, you know, if you've got a client in mind who you know they're not tracking variations, they're not quoting for changes in jobs, this would be the ideal time to, to raise a conversation with them about it. Absolutely. So we do have a partner program with Next Minute. So at the very start, um, I mentioned I am the partner manager. So I work um, only with accountants and bookkeepers. I am here as your resource um, and I will work directly with you to help your clients. Um, we completely understand that you, know, you guys are in a prime position to be referring software and then also business process improvements to your clients. Uh, so we wanna work with you to make that as easy as possible for you guys. Uh, whether that means that we do the work for you or if you want to do the work yourself, we will let you guys run the show there. Um, as you can see, the last point, it's your clients, it's your approach. Uh, but with the partner program, so you get me as your dedicated partner manager. I'm based in Sydney uh, in Australia. So I am across both time zones. We also provide uh, training and support and we have a free demo subscription that you guys will get access to as well. And our next steps for today would be to sign up for that free subscription. So all you'd have to do is sign up for a free trial and then we can turn it into your free sandbox account. So you've got somewhere to go and play around with and start to you know, learn how to use it for your clients. And then book a demo with me so we can show you um, with specific clients how the product will work. Um, we're more than happy to tailor those demos to your needs. And then try and identify one client who you know is not tracking variations that you could use as a bit of a, a guinea pig for you guys to test how the product works and then um, refer them across to next minute and see if it's something that would be a solution for them. So that's probably a wrap for today. Is there anything else, Dave, that you want to oh, add just, in there? Um, I just think the key thing is to go and have a chat, go and have a look at, you know, some of your, your trade clients and get an understanding of where they're at with the stuff. And, you know, sometimes it might be that they're not ready for something now. Um, you know, they might need 12 months because we've seen the adoption is, you know, like they do take a little bit of time. But 
if you sow the seeds now, get your head around that there is another way um, or, or a better way to do this stuff. And, and ultimately it's around you know, freeing up their time and, and helping them get paid for the things that they have been working on. Um, and, and look, there's, there's heaps of help and support. Um, even if it's just a chat, you want a demo, anything like that, we're just, we're here to help. And really it's all around sort of educating um, yourselves, but also the market because you know, there's a lot of opportunities out there for them to take advantage of. And, and having a nice, simple tool that plugs into NYB and Zero is just such a smart way to go about it. Um, and also, thank you for attending and sitting in on this. Um, and a pleasure having another chat with you guys. Um, I'm sure we'll be doing another webinar in, in the near future. Um, but from next minute, uh, for myself, thank you so much and wish you a good afternoon, good evening. <laughs>